Hey everyone, and welcome back to The Shadowed Path. Uh, I am Norz, your DM, your GM, your LM, your player. This is uh, my The One Ring 2E solo playthrough. Uh, this is episode 5. It's been a while, it's been a long while since I uh, posted the last session. I know I said I was going to start doing different uh, sessions or in different systems, but then time went by and I just really wanted to play this. So that's what I'm playing. I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not a professional. I'm just going to play what I want to play, um, you know. So I hope this finds you well and you're enjoying the story so far. Um, for my own sake, I need to think about a little recap. I know. Adir, son of Onar, was uh, helping Balin out. I have my maps this time, which is nice. And he sort of cured or helped Balin uh, in some way. But Balin was still sort of like weak and told him that there is something that needed to be found uh, in this other, other mine. Uh, some type of powerful creature or thing um, and so Adir son of Onar went out to investigate this uh, thing that uh, that apparently killed all of Balin's um, you know people or his adventuring party and Balin escaped so that's, you know, it's not looking good considering Adir, son of Onar. Oh, he is looking for, I think it was a, a book or a map of something that Balin wants. I, I mean, I, I think this is metagaming a little bit, but it's very clear that Balin doesn't know where to find the doors of Moria. And so he's looking for lore that could tell him that, right? Because Balin eventually goes and tries to, like, retake Moria, which we also know. If you're a Lord of the Rings person at all, Balin dies <laughs> uh, trying to retake Moria. Um, but the doors have been lost for, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of years. And so, uh, yeah, thousands of years. So, um, you know, he needs some tangible evidence of where to begin looking. So. Last time, Adir healed Balin and then ventured just across these mountains to this other mine. But in the process, he, <laughs> he got attacked by goblins and pretty beat up. He did not fare well against these goblins. And so he's, he's not in the best shape of his life as he comes to these doors. The doors of this mine are broken, their stone hinges have cracked, and the darkness looms uh, be before him. He, Adir, is going to, he's going to sneak. I, I think this is a time for stealth, and unfortunately, my stealth is not so good. In fact... My stealth is very, very bad. I have no levels in it. But it doesn't hurt to try, right? Maybe I get lucky and get that Gandalf rune. 1 in 12. <laughs> um, Alright, so he's going to try to sort of sneak carefully up. I imagine... Oh, yeah. The, I remember the last time I mentioned that there were, like... That it had fallen out. And there's a dank, like a, a, a bad smell coming from within. So let's see what my roll can do. Stealth. <laughs> I got a 5. Not going to cut it, of course, because I needed a 14 or better, which the only thing I could get would be um, the uh, Gandalf run. So I delve. He, he sneaks forward. Um, and enters the mine. Okay, so this is how 
this uh, exploration of this mine is gonna work. I need, I'm gonna, I just put this pretty randomly. I just wrote that I need 10 successes total to find what I'm looking for. Um, after each successful roll, and the, the rolls are going to be exploration rolls, because that's exactly what this is for. Um, after each successful roll, no matter how many successes I get in that roll, because you can get, you know, if you succeed, that's one roll, that's one success, but then if you get like two sixes, that'd be, that one roll would be three successes. So no matter how many successes I get in a single roll, I have to roll on the lower table to sort of describe what I have, what Adir has found. On any failed rolls, I will roll an event um, per the uh, core uh, rulebook and suffer the consequences of that event or the uh, boons of that event, wh whatever that is. So the first thing to do is that I need to roll a explore. Um, so I have two pips an explore, which means I roll the feet die and two of these. So, do I want to use hope? That's the question. Uh, if I use hope, maximum of 12. Shadow, I have five shadow. Uh, no, I'm not going to use hope. I'm just going to see, uh, like, hope would be last resort, I think, on this. So I need a 14 to succeed. I got a 10, 16, 19, and I got a six, which means that's two, uh, two successes. So I've got two successes. Roll one, two. Okay. So what does, the question is, what does he find deep down in this, in, in these, as he goes through this. So I need, uh, let's see here. We'll go, okay, uh, probably the aspect and the focus. So I'll do a, a as what does he find in these tunnels? Two, three, ah, that's, uh, okay, so aspect is good. Oh no, that's not right. Dangerous. Dangerous something. 4-4. Four, four. Dangerous. Kindred. Oh, I already know what he found. Uh, but, uh, okay. He begins walking into this. He lights a torch. <laughs> And he is walking down into the mine. And I think, like any good abandoned mine in Middle Earth, mine in Middle Earth, there's the sound of water. It smells like moss that's rotting, with like the tinge of a sweet, sickly, almost like rotting flesh. He smells around and uses his torch and different, doesn't take long before different uh, passageways lead off from the main passage. And he sees a chamber and I have to, I have to ask a question. I have to ask a question from the telling table because it's dangerous kindred, which means dangerous dwarves, right? He might come across other dwarves. And my question, I, it, it just seems so obvious to me that these are like somehow possessed dwarves that are gonna attack him. But I'm gonna, I think, I'm gonna say it's likely that that's the case, but I am gonna say the telling table, roll of feet die, answer yes or no questions. 
are the dangerous kindred like uh they could be white no yeah i think a white would actually be the appropriate monster but like because whites are mm, undead spirits who take over the bodies of the living which why or take over the bodies um a white or maybe a fell wraith would make more sense let me read up on this real quick maybe i'll read you some of what what i find out okay so what i found in the end was actually the marsh dwellers so the marsh dwellers are shambling humanoid creatures with clammy pale flesh like that of corpses left to rot in the water a fell light in their small eyes suggests a wicked vitality and intent. They dwell among ruins where men used to live once. We're going to fudge that a little bit. Yeah, we're not canon here. Because why, if this can happen to the, you know, dead people, why couldn't it happen to dead dwarves? Um, often by dark pools of stagnant water. They hide underground in small groups, ready to ambush unwary travelers and drag them into the cellars where they hoard their stolen gold. That uh, sounds extremely appropriate to me. So have Balin's companions who were killed in this place or who were lost in this place, have they become marsh dwellers? I'm going to say likely. Four or greater. It's a six. They have. I think Adir, son of Onar, he comes to this place where there's the passage splits into three. And off, they're all sort of skew to the left. His torch, he's trying to go as quietly as possible. And off to <laughs> the right, there is a sound of and he slowly approaches with his fire his torch held aloft though he knows that whatever is there will know he's there due to the light and the warmth um, I'm going to roll a d6 and see, I'm going to roll a, a, an evil d6 because it makes more sense to do it that way. And see how many of these creatures there, there are. Just the one. He comes to the place where there is a doorway to the right. <coughs> and you can see that there used to be a wooden door here, but it's almost turned to dust. It's been abandoned for so long. And in through the doorway, there is a, a creature crouching sort of in the shadows of a small, like a little antechamber almost. Maybe it was once used to hold weapons of some sort. And this thing turns and looks with its beady, glowing eyes at, uh, at Adir. Uh, and Adir is immediately going to throw his spear at it because uh, it's, he can see that it is dwarf and dwarvish in stature but its sounds and movements are jerky almost like a wind up uh wind up animal or wind up uh wind up toy um in its movement as it <coughs> begins to uh climb like sort of get to its feet it's like back straightens and it's just like <coughs> this huge crunching sound and it he's gonna he 
has his his torch in one hand, flings his torch to his less dominant hand, just pulls out his spear and just throws this spear right at this thing. So this is the opening volley of combat. Um, let's see here. It doesn't have any parry, so I just need to hit that 12 mark with my spear. Oh, geez. I, I, yeah, they, um, he goes to throw it. I didn't hit at all. I got, uh, out of all three dice, I got, uh, five, six, seven. That was really poor. Um, and somehow the creature's, like, sort of awkward and strange motions, like, it jerks to the side to dodge the, the spear. Um, it has no uh, attacks, uh, ranged attacks, so we go straight to melee. I imagine this thing, it's a dwarf, but it's not a dwarf. It's like got, uh, its beard is like rotting and part of its face is torn away. It's pale, pale has pale, pale skin. Um, some of it, its arms are far thinner. It's almost like this a dwarf has been like dried out it's a shriveled up husk of what this one dwarf once was yet it still wears the armor that the dwarf itself has died in so it's like this maybe like a leather and chain mail sort of like patchwork of armor um in certain places as chain and other patches that has leather and it looks not it doesn't look completely old it's it's pretty new like it's very clear that this is one of Balin's um one of Balin's companions so um I'm gonna choose my stance here my stance I'm just gonna go forward and just try to like really knock this thing off so I like having my dice up here a little more um, so forward means I get an extra uh, dice to my attack, but it also means this thing is going to be able to have an extra dice attacking me when it does. Um, it also has fear fire. The creature loses one hate at the start of each round. It is engaged in close combat with an adversary wielding a torch or other sort of burning. Oh, that's good. So it fears fire, so it basically is going to be weaker because I'm here. So round one, at the beginning of the round, at the start of each round, so it loses one hate automatically, which means it's down to two hate. Um, uh, okay, um, Edir just like wades in, just like with this big uppercut with hit one of his axes, he's going to roll his attack. And I just need to do, yeah, just need to hit that, uh, <laughs> that 12 mark. Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, definitely got it, but no extra successes. Uh, so I, uh, Adir just wades in and just, <laughs> just basically just slashes upward, cleaving part of this thing's, uh, torso and hitting some of its armor and it takes five uh five damage which what how much oh it doesn't have a ton but yeah it's a it's a it's a good hit clean hit but this thing's still up so it gets to attack back um so its turn it's going to use its oh geez it can bite or claw what's the better one i think Bite is better. Oh, but it also has C's. Mmm. Interesting. Got to look something up. All right. It is going to use, uh, it's going to use its claws because if it scores a, a special hit, then it can grab hold of uh, Adir. And that's its main goal is to take it, take Adir somewhere. So it gets two plus one because I'm in uh, the forward stance. And it's aiming for my parry, which is 14. Definitely got it. Luckily, it didn't get any 
uh, extra and didn't get any sixes. So uh, it just does a solid three, yeah, three damage. Uh, gosh, um, so I'm down to 17. It's not great. Um, uh, do I do I stay in forward? I think I do. I stay in forward, and so roll my dice again. Uh, this thing slashes at. Uh, hmm, interesting. Slashes at uh, a deer. A deer uh, jerks back, but its claws or its like hand just like grips onto uh, his armor and sort of pulls him forward. That'd take out like three endurance. You know, it's about mental stress and in t like the intensity of, um, you know, how how much work it is to be in a fight. Not only damage is endurance is represented of. Uh, so, uh, oh yeah, and uh, it gets another minus one uh, hate. Um, because it's near a fire and it's frightened, and a deer is going to swing at it again with its. Oh no, that's actually. I still think I make it five, nine. I do, but just barely. I got a two on the feet die, so that wasn't ideal. Um, a deer shoves it back with his uh, with his torch hand and just <laughs> hits it on on the. Uh, on the head, so to speak. So it hits down uh, 10, I do another, yeah, another five, and it reels back, and, you know, I don't think things are stupid, but, okay, it's, it's gonna try to escape I don't think these things are smart either. They're sort of like mindless zombies, I, I, I suppose. And they just, they seek, like, basically human flesh and want to drag things to its, its lair, so to speak. Um, so I think it's just gonna do the same thing, actually, and try to grab hold of, of a deer. Uh, and it succeeds this time. Um, so, it does the three damage, um, ugh, god, and takes me down to 14, <laughs> and, uh, it grabs hold of a deer, and a deer can only make brawling attacks now, uh, brawling isn't great, um, and I can only fight in the forward position so I cannot try to protect myself uh, a deer is going to okay hang on I need to check a rule okay uh, just seeing what hate could be used for makes it basically mostly fell abilities but this this creature's fell ability just is like bad things happen to it when it's near fire and or in uh, sunlight so with that in mind it's grabs hold of a deer and starts pulling him into the room. Uh, it's going to lose its last hate, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, this thing isn't doing too well. Uh, <laughs> I know that there is no... Um, uh, rule for attacking really with, I guess, brawling an improvised weapon. So uh, that's exactly what Adir is still holding his uh, his m torch, and he's gonna try to drive the torch into this thing's head with an attack. And I still get three uh, three f skill die because um, I'm in open stance, and your brawling skill is the average of your combat proficiencies which is two, because both my spears and my axe also both have two. So he's going to drive this uh, fire into this thing's... He's going to try to stab... Like, 
plug its eye socket with it. Seven, uh, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. I just got thirteen. I'm gonna say, uh, as this thing starts pulling him forward, he's gonna like grab hold of it as well and it, like pushes it. The uh, he just jams the uh, the torch into this thing's eye. This thing gives a gurgle. <laughs> And Adir's like, <laughs> and pushes it off. The torch goes dark as the thing falls back. And Adir is left with, um, in the dark with his own panting breathing. And it is pitch black. Let's see. He does have the flute, amulet. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, awareness. Uh, say that he could. Uh, I'm going to roll an awareness check here to see if he can, uh, I dropped my dice. Um, I'm going to roll an awareness check to see if he can figure out, like, sort of how to get the torch going again. Oh, actually, it's not awareness. He can easily be like, okay, I pushed this creature here and he pulls the torch out but it's wet with some sticky ichor that doesn't quite smell like blood it's like blood but it's like the metallic of blood but uh, too sweet like smelling to be blood and then um he's gonna need to try to mm, do the fire so i think that's a that's a hunting roll which i'm not good at all right uh, I got <sighs> okay I'm going to use a hope to gain an extra dice to try to relight my fire with my flint and tinder in the darkness Gandalf rune and two sixes that's crazy it's like the best roll you could possibly have gotten Oh, that's bananas. Okay, so I got the Gandalf rune. You can see it there. Yeah, it's backwards, but that's okay. And I rolled two sixes out of all... It's the best result for Adir on all of these, which is crazy. That's, that's pretty wild. Um, all right. I need to think about how I want to spend these. All right, on the special, uh, yeah, on the special, special success situation. So I succeed, I'll spend one to do it more quickly because darkness, like, wasn't quiet, you know, a deer wasn't quiet killing this thing. And going quickly seems like a good idea. The other thing I'll do is build an advantage, which basically means I get a, an extra dice on my next my next roll. My cat is visiting. This is Wellington, if you haven't met him. And he's always on my lap. He looks pretty grumpy. <laughs> I know, bud. He is just a little lap glutton um so uh so i'm gonna save a dice to use and how do i build this advantage i guess is sort of the narrative question um he's gonna take some time sort of gathering himself he checks all of his gear and uh retrieves his spear that's for sure and I think maybe the, the thing he 
does is that he keeps his he puts his axe away but he keeps his spear out like he doesn't he doesn't want to come upon something like this and have to like take his spear out again so that's what he's going to do he leaves his spear out so i'm going to say that's like an extra dice for the next attack i roll not necessarily just the next skill check um that just doesn't seem quite right to me. So th the next thing to do, excuse me, I worked today as I'm a substitute teacher sometimes, and today I was a substitute teacher, so I'm tired. Okay, um, next thing is another exploration roll. So here we go, two dice. Oh. Oh, maybe, actually, I am going to keep that dice for, it. the way that he prepares, it's not that he prepares, like, I'm building the advantage, like, no, I examine the dwarf marsh creature and find unmistakable signs that this, this character is, um... This person was part, has like Balin's like sigil on its armor stamped into part of the leather. Like I'm like, oh, this is it. So now he's going to go explore again. I'm going to take that, um, that dice forward. So I get three dice instead of two to my exploration. <laughs> and I did great. I got three more successes. That's amazing. Um, so I'm up to five successes. Roll two, three more successes. And let's see, what do I find? Lower table um, aspect. Ten four. Ten four. Wild and focus. So wild. Ooh. Wild curse. That doesn't sound good, does it? Um I gotta think about this. Wild curse. Um, a deer, after examining the body, he picks up his torch, his spear, and he sniffs the three tunnels. He picks one. Which one does he pick? I think he picks the far left. And he goes down into it. Hmm. I'm curious about this wild curse. There's not a lot of rules governing things like this, but I imagine that this is like a really something is distorting like the the nature of these caves and he can tell now the question is what effect it has on him is my question like there's a entity in here that weighs ah i got it i got it oh my gosh is it was so obvious once i realized it the wild curse is like dreadful sorcery and all right, I'm going to say 1d3 dread, okay, on this dice. So 1, one 2 is 1, 3, 4 is 2, 5, 6 is 3. So depending on, although I, I guess first I need to see if I can um, basically repel it. As he's going down into this, he can feel this darkness, like the dark of the tunnels and the dark of the mine even with the torch 
seem to press in and on him. I love the descriptions of in Lord of the Rings, which is just right behind me here. Um, the books, I mean, uh, I love the descriptions of like darkness being this heavy weight or this thing that can cocoon your heart and like shield your heart from any hope at all. Uh, and that's the type of feeling that Adir, son of Onar, has this dark, sort of hopeless despair. And his dread comes thick and fast. It is the, like, every step takes another piece of courage. So now he's, I think, uh, well, it doesn't matter. I think wisdom or valor does. Valor is dread. So he is going to try to sort of throw this off. That's my heart TN. So I need a 13 out of two dice. Or I'm going to take dread, which just means shadow. Hmm. Okay. I'm just going to go for it. How is his valor? Eight. Ah, uh, is one away. Oh, just one away. I was so close, a dear. Oh, okay. So he's just. Yeah, it's really shit. Uh, all right, so how many? I get three shadow. Oh my gosh, that's not good. I rolled, oh no, no, sorry. I get two shadow. That's still bad. Oh, I had five, I had six, seven, up to seven. That's still pretty dang bad. Cause I got a three on the die, which one, two is one, three, four is two and so on. Uh, oh, a deer, I'm just putting him through the ringer, and he can feel this, like, cold clenching his heart, and he knows something very wicked is down here. All right. Uh, I'm up to five successes. I just need five more. The problem is that's multiple. I haven't really actually done these uh, these like checks like I said I was going to. I said I was going to do like descriptions of where I was going. Every single time I've done a roll, I've like basically done an event of my own making, which I don't know. It just made sense to do it that way. All right. But I got to try to get these uh, God. I got to try to get these uh these successes. I can't afford to have a failure, so I'm going to use another hope point, which brings me down to nine, which is really bad. Uh, I really hope I don't take more shadow. All right, so I'm going to take that extra dice and see what my exploration is. <laughs> uh, I failed. And got an Eye of Sauron, which means the eye awareness goes up. To three. And I am, let's see here. Oh, shoot. Yeah, 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 D&D &D Beyond is same things. Uh... Oh right, I need I need the the ruins of lost realm. Yes. I am in Yeah. But blue mountains. Yeah, I'm in I'm in a dark land. And the dark lands have I think the eye awareness is pretty low. Oh, it's, not, it's not like where I'm at. I'm only at like three right now. So 
Eye of Mordor. Here we go. The eye awareness is four. That's the hunt is fourteen. So the player here is protected by a blood patch. I haven't gained great renown. The enemy is actively looking. No, the player hero is traveling under a false name. No. So, yeah. Okay. That's fine, I guess. Ah. So. Yeah. Sorry, I just changed my setup a little bit so I can like look more at the camera instead of turning. Anyways, um, okay. So I got this failure. I got the Eye of Sauron. I think that's a terrible misfortune situation or ill fortune. So let's see here. Reading the feet die. Uh, Rolling a failure with the Eye of Sauron icon means a failure was compl complicated by ill fortune, such as a broken weapon, difficult terrain, or an enemy reinforcements. To help inspire a random result, roll on the ill fortune table. Keep in mind that you're free to gloss over either of those. Result. Just consider the nature of the success or failure in the context of the situation and move on. Hmm. Okay, let's like uh let's just roll on the ill fortune table five. You find yourself ill equipped for the circumstances. Ah, uh, yeah. You find yourself ill equipped for the circumstances. So I think Oh, yeah, as he's going down into the into the the mountain or into the mine he comes to just like a chasm and it looks like there is a bridge that once spanned this way um but it has been destroyed and in like tatters of rope hang from either side and the chasm cuts one way and the other, and he can't jump across. It's too far, and there's no one there to toss him because, as we all know, dwarves toss very well, and he has to turn back. That makes total sense. Okay, I'm not going to use f f any more uh, hope because I'm so close to being miserable and I don't know I don't remember exactly what that means for how bad it is but it's not oh I do actually I think if I'm miserable like ones twos and threes don't count on my uh, skill die or something like that maybe that's weary I don't recall but it's not good so I'm just gonna use the two dice and explore again Uh, I got like 10, so another failure. <sighs> a deer might have to retreat and try to recoup and, and try again later. I don't think he's cut out for this at the moment. Uh, let's go to the events. Um, yes. Right, I need to make an ill-favored journey event roll. Here we go. Got a two. Ill choices. If the roll fails, gain one shadow point. In dread. So I take two fatigue regardless. This has been difficult in taxing. So I'm up to three, and I gain a dread if I fail this roll. E.K. Um, we're going to say, who does it target? 
Uh, I need D6. Who does it? What? What does it target? The two would be Scout. So Explore. Uh, another Explore roll. Not the worst, but not the best. And then I go down to the Terrible Misfortune. Oh, yeah. Despair, Mishap, Ill Choices. Here we go. Um, yeah, event Detail. Okay. The rail fails. Gain one dread. Awareness, explore, hunting, explore, explore. Oh, I roll. Oh, I did. I did that. I got the two, but now I need to roll on the ill fortune table first, because then it will tell me which which dice to roll. I should I should have realized that. A five. Disorienting in environs. Explore to find your way. Yeah, that sounds about right. Distorting environs. It is an explore roll, so I was doing the right thing. Um, I need a 14 out of this, or things could get really ugly. I got a 9. I got a 14. I did. I succeeded. <sighs> All right. Um, I imagine that this misfortune was like... He starts heading back, and as he's going back, he's realizing that there were, like, as he walked down, he couldn't see them, because there were other tunnels that led off to the sides, but his torch was in front of him, and as he's coming back, he sees that there are, like, other tunnels leading off, sort of at an angle that he couldn't see, and he's like, wait, which one did I come down? And he guesses right, luckily, and so he doesn't take this dread, even though there is some dark shadow uh, certainly influencing his decision-making, but also the place. It's distorting the reality of the place that he's in. All right. Uh, he gets back to like the Three Forks and the place where he killed the, the uh, dwarf zombie. Dwarf Crawler, Dwarf Marsh Crawler, and gosh, what's he gonna do? Do I just head back? Because I'm up to, I think, I think he needs to take a short rest, at the very least. Because then he could recover six of his strength. But he's still in a bad place with his shadow and his hope, as well as his fatigue and his load. Well, his load's not going to change, really, but his fatigue certainly would. So, damn, I'm so close. Well, I'm halfway there. All right, he'll take a short rest. He's gonna he's gonna take it that rest in that chamber where um, where he killed that other dwarf creature. So it, go back up to twenty here. Um, but like, I feel like there does need to be some type of consequence. Like, I guess the question is, there's a telling table question in here. And it's as simple as does some evil, does an adversary find a deer where he is? And I'm going to say it's doubtful because I think he's been pretty quiet since then, since he, he had that fight. But it's not, it's not uh, completely out of the question. So here we go. Uh, it says eight or greater... Wait, eight, doubtful, eight or greater. 
Oh, does he get attacked? Is the question, or does he? Does an adversary find him? So on an eight or greater, it's a yes. That's a three. Whew. So he is able to rest for like an hour or so and gain back some of that uh, endurance, which is really big. Okay. Then perhaps as he's there, he looks around this room a little more. And finds what? I mean, I think there's, it's like, I imagine it to be like an old, I said antechamber, but maybe like an old study. No, no, that wouldn't make sense. But like, yeah, like antechamber would have like old, maybe old books and things and like maybe a shelf built into the wall. And there's like some like moldering tombs that turn to dust when he touches them. And yeah. And so in that way, he sort of spends his time just resting and recovering. And when he's ready again, he he eats a little bit and then he sets out again um, to try to explore this place. He picks the, the far right passage this time as the far left one just went to like a chasm. All right. 14. <laughs> Got the Eye of Sauron again. Oh, so this goes up to four. And I I think Adir needs to cut his losses at this point. It's just embarrassing. Uh, skill special table. Uh, Ill Fortune. Let's see what he finds here. Oh, my goodness. Uh, here we go. <laughs> no! Another Eye of Sauron! Two in a row! Your actions catch the eye of the enemy, increase the eye awareness by two. <sighs> so frustrating. Okay. I'm just like, WTF. Um, he goes into the right passage and it goes, winds around, it goes down some stairs and I need to roll an event, I suppose. So let's roll an ill-favored event. To see what I find. Ah, uh, two threes. So both of them were ill choice. So scroll down to the ill choice again. Seven. Oh, wait, I was supposed to be roll a, a D, a D6, not a D12. <laughs> um, four, lost query, hunting to follow its track. I gain another fucking shadow point if I I gain two more fatigue. It's not great. And I could gain a shadow point. This is hunting. Uh, hunting's not great. Okay. As Adir is going down this tunnel, this second tunnel, he <laughs> no way that can't be it. Maybe he yeah. He goes along this curving tunnel goes down some stairs and he realizes he's going he's going down like these like switchback stairs 
and he realizes pretty quickly that these stairs are taking him into the chasm that runs the length of all three, what he believes is all three of these passages, even though he's only taken two. He's guessing that it also runs the length of the third one, but who knows. And as he's going down, he can feel something, not sure what, because I am going to do something I haven't done before. I'm actually going to grab out the core book here for everyone to see so that we can do this together. All right. Okay. We have the core rule book here. Um, and we're going to go down to append appendices and to nameless things. And we're just going to make a nameless thing because this is going to dictate if, if, if I rolled something that means the eye of the enemy sort of ca is caught upon me. I think it's only only makes sense in this dark place that nameless thing in North um, Dwarf in uh, South Dwarf. South Dwarf Mines. All right, let's make a nameless thing, eh? Uh, table one. Roll a feet die. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Bane. It's called the, the Bane and a D6. Two. Of the abyss. Uh, of the abyss. <laughs> By whom? Four? By orcs. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's crazy. Even the orcs don't like this thing. It's called the Bane of, of the Abyss by the orcs. Bane of the Abyss. What does that even mean? I don't, I'm not sure. But that's fun. Okay. Uh, next thing, uh, it is three, slug-like, is slug, slug-like, uh, and the D6 with, with remorseless. Uh, sorry, I'm writing this all down so I don't forget. <laughs> this is like my session notes right now. And when first encountered... Okay, here is like the description of like a deer going down this tunnel. He notices... What does he notice? Dice? What does he notice? Dice? Gandalf rune. He notices how cold it's getting as he descends. Um, a deer descends, he notices the temperature drop and the, oh, and his torch begins to like gutter and shake, just like, you know, when flames make that sound, there's no, but strangely as well. A deer realizes that, like, there's no... I mean, there's never any breeze. Like, he's in a mine with, like, an abandoned mine. There's not going to be a breeze down there. But yet, his f torch begins to flicker and sputter. And uh, he feels the terrible cold. And what else... Uh, at first sight, I don't even think he's going to see this thing, but I got a four. It is its gaping mouth opening and closing as if gasping for air. Ugh. This slug-like thing. I do imagine as he's going down these, these stairs, 
this thing is like attached to the wall to the chasm it's like sort of like hanging on there which is crazy um which is cr uh yeah that's gross it's just pretty gross i just i don't even know I don't know. Okay. And then, um, I think the rumor is maybe something that, <laughs> uh, he'll have to find out about later, but we're, I'm just going to pick it real quick and copy and paste it. So this is the rumor number eight. Um, but maybe that's more of something that he'll find out about it later because it's not immediately apparent. Uh, oh gosh. Yeah, this is this is a lot. What are the things? 10? Okay. Oh, crazy. Elrond knows about this thing. Dang it. There we go. Good enough. I'm just taking notes, sorry that it's probably not exciting to watch. Um, I just don't want to forget this thing because it's having a horrible impact on m my character right now. Uh, okay, characteristics. Wait, what the heck? Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, so I roll on this e attribute level hate. Okay, attribute level. <laughs> it's got 11, 11 attribute level 11 hate 11 okay great it's like this massive creature what's its armor nine d4 that's still insanely uh a d4 is still insanely good and uh parry Seven. Sick. No parry. Parry is zero. That makes sense. It's a slug. What a... Yeah. Endurance. Ten. Fifty-six. Interesting. I love this. This is so fun. Uh, might. How much might does it have? Three. So it takes three attacks. That's insane. Combat proficiency, oh, great. Six, three, okay. Combat prof is three. And number of fell abilities, oh god. I got a six, which means four. Uh, fell abilities, four, that's insane, okay. Success die roll. Attack forms. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Three. Bite. Uh, interesting. Okay. Maybe uh, attack. Bite slash beak. I imagine that this thing has like a mouth that's like... You know, like the Kraken or uh, the the, the the Watcher in the water of Moria in the movie, how it's like opens up its mouth and then opens like a, a second mouth, right? This thing is the same. It's like this strange gelatinous slug monster that has like this gaping maw that's just like sucking air, but inside of it, this thing comes out and it's like a beak almost, I think would make a lot of sense. Um, and it says attribute level minus one, minus two. What does that mean? Oh, it can actually damage. Oh, okay. Attribute level. Ah, okay. Okay. So damage, it does, I got a two. So it's just attribute. So what does that mean? Oh, it's might 
No? I don't. Roll twice on the following table to determine the primary and secondary attacks. Oh, I need to do another secondary attack. Um, so, I, first one is bite attribute level. What does that mean? Does that mean it, like, the combat proficiency? I think so. Bite, and then it's like three and injury uh, 16 and special damage over bear. Interesting. And I got to do another one. Okay. Wait, attribute, attribute. Oh, attribute level. Oh my gosh. So this thing doesn't do three, it does 11. It does literally 11 damage in one attack. That's so stupid. That's so good. That's why it says minus. So this one also does, oh my gosh. Uh, this one is one, so it crush hooves. I think it's more like, if it's gonna crush thing, it's gonna crawl over, like or like roll <laughs> over someone. Or maybe it has a like, giant uh, flipper. Crush. It can like crush with its giant flipper. Let's see how much damage it does. Five. Uh, okay, so it does um, eleven minus three. So that's not s as bad, um, but it's still insanely good. Uh, so eight, uh, and then its injury is a two. So that's fourteen. The flipper is just worse at everything. And then lastly, oh, it also has overbear. I don't like that, though. I don't like having doubles of something. So let's just try that again. Six, we'll go pierce. Eh, I'm going to switch them because the beak should have pierce. And the, uh, the, f the other thing should have overbear. Okay. Well, okay. Okay. Um... I'm gonna to make a note here that I'm I'm on table eight, and I'm gonna finish it later, because I think I know everything I need to know. Like I don't need to roll all these like fell abilities right now and and everything. Although it would be the last thing to do, but um, I'm gonna leave it there because I want to focus on the narrative again. That was fun, though. That's crazy. This monster is legit, le legit terrifying. And I don't know when Adir would ever be able to try to kill something like this. Probably, maybe never. Probably never. Um, so he's going to go down this thing, and he hears this sound of... And that is where the breath, the breath, its intake of breath is making his, his uh, torch gutter and sputter. And he breathes out and he can see his breath. And um, he comes down the last stair. And I think this thing... I don't think this thing has eyes. I just imagine this thing to be like this gnarly giant slug on the wall. And it maybe can like skitter. Like maybe it has like tiny, tiny feet that just... You hear this... He hears this sound of like millions of marching ants all at once, almost like raindrops, but much creepier. And... I think he sees this, <laughs> he sees this thing, and he, he, he's not going to fight it, you know, he, it's, it's like, I imagine that it's, you know, five or six times his size on the side of the wall, 
it's got these big sort of flipper things that sort of like help stabilize it. Maybe they're like almost like like claws that it can like like grab onto things and it sort of like as he looks at it, it's like and shifts itself around and like turns its head toward toward him and oh it's like a slug but it's got these like hands like a small arms and it has like a, a face that resembles far too closely like a person either a, any 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 of the good people of middle earth right and as it opens its mouth like it's like alien like another mouth comes out of it and he he doesn't wait he's not gonna adir is not gonna stand there and be like oh this is interesting he is he's out he's he's gone this thing and as he runs up the stairs this thing is gonna up as well i think this is gonna be like an athletics check just to be like how fast can he get the f out of dodge he does not want anything to do with this persuade a healing insight travel could be a tr no can't be a travel roll it's got to be athletics and let's see if he can just get out of here as quickly as possible no so i'm, I'm not gonna I, he still is able to get out but he's gonna leave something behind oh man bummer his elven cloak is the obvious one right he's running he's racing this thing is like climbing up the wall sort of trying to grab him or like catch him and he it or it's not it's not gone but it's ripped and so it doesn't provide he rips his elven cloak pretty badly it doesn't provide the stealth bonus that it usually would and so he ends up um he he'll need to find some elves to fix it and he tears ass out of there just with his torch guttering and he falls sort of out into the the like say it's two in the afternoon comes hurtling out of there to sort of sprawl in the dirt outside this this mine and he's panting <sighs> and he looks up and he hangs his head because he knows he's going to have to go back to Balin empty handed there's nothing he can do whatever is in that mine needs to stay buried and that is where I'm going to end this session that was a wild session man Adir has just gotten the tar beaten out of him over and over and over again it's crazy it's so funny oh I rolled so bad I rolled so many eyes of sorrow in this session but I really appreciate you all hanging out, watching along. This has been a fun, a really fun one. I'll be back with another episode soon, probably. I've I, I've noticed that like my hobbying, it goes in waves. Like I get really excited about something, and I play for a while, and then I sort of dip, and then it comes back, and it's just, it's just that wave. It's that roller coaster, man. You know, and so. Um, I've gotten really bad. I've really gotten back into playing D and D lately. It's just been a ton of fun. Um, if you ever want to play, let me know. Uh, yeah. Um, I I also am excited for the uh, the Moria box or the Moria book that's coming out. I'll probably be running a, a campaign of that at some point in the not too distant future once it's out. I don't really like playing through alphas because alphas are still so malleable. It's it's almost better just to wait. 
Uh, I have the alpha of the Moria book, but I rather, really rather wait for it to be, um, you know, finished, like the final product of the publisher and writer, because I think the Free League does just an amazing job with all the games they make, really, I'm, and um, I want to experience them the way that they imagine them and play test them and, and put them through the ringer of what the, the, the best thing they can produce, so uh, I'll be waiting for that. And um, if you uh, if you would like to support me and support uh, my channel, please subscribe here. Uh, if you like these videos and just want to throw me a couple bucks, obviously very much appreciate it. You can do that on my Ko-fi page. Uh, it's in the description. I also have started a I'm really excited about Tales of the Valiant, which is a 5e system. It's very, very similar. It's like very core D&D 5e, but it's basically just an improved version of it by Kobold Press, one of my favorite third-party publishers. They are amazing, and they're making their own 5e system that like reworks how magic works a little bit. They rework some of the classes. They're sort of updating things. It's really a response to the OGL debacle um, last year, the year before, I can't remember, uh, that Wizards of the Coast went through. And basically, uh, they, uh, Cobalt Press is making a system that is 5e but better um, with some quality of life improvements and making sure that creators will be able to create for it forever or until, you know, until people don't want to anymore um, just to protect the gaming community so if you're interested in uh, the 5, 5e and Tales of the Valiant um, I have started a series of supplements and sort of world like a world building project and uh, an adventure module that I'm going to be working on and I have I think I have two uh, posts up about my world called the Twin Twin Kingdoms. Not super, not super, uh, what's the word? Original. But the campaign that I'm setting in there is going to be, it's an undead campaign. Your characters start as undead, which I think, and their first task is to escape from the land of the dead, which I think could be really fun. Uh, I've made some cool mechanics and written some cool like rules to sort of dictate how the land of the dead works and how they can escape and then that will be the first part probably like one through four levels one through four one through five there and I, I'm pretty excited about it so I've been writing lore and I've been writing uh, character options and all these things so if you're interested in that type of stuff subscribe um, you can follow me on Kofi and check that out uh there is a paid uh um membership tier that gets you like some extra uh extra things uh access to my discord uh i'll run a game in there once once a month for for people who support me of a, any game that people are interested in um i love learning new games and i love dming so you know and uh, I'll also be, uh, you can, I'll put polls in there sometimes for like what types of things you want me to create. Um, so if you'd like to, I'm really just trying to throw my, my weight uh, at this whole idea of making a little bit of money as a creator. Uh, I love tabletop games and I love writing stuff for them and I'm excited to play them. So <laughs> why not? Uh, so if you're interested, check out my Kofi page. Like I said, it's in the description. Follow this channel if you want more solo role-playing videos. They're, these will always be free. I'm never going to put these guys, these things behind a paywall. Um, so this is what I did on my Friday night because I was like, I just really wanted to play and my friends were busy. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, until next time, we'll see what Adir gets up to next time. I think you just got to go report to Balin and be like, ah, sorry, man. Um, so, all right. Uh, have a good weekend, everybody, and I'll see you all later.